station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yes, I'm ready for the event. Fox and Friends, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Talk about out of this world. This year, astronaut Peggy Winston breaking records for the longest time spent in outer space more than any American in NASA history. And she's still there, live from outer space. Joining us from the International Space Station is Peggy Whitson. Peggy, uh, is it good morning, good afternoon <laughs> up there? Would you explain for our audience right now what a day is like on the International Space Station? Because you keep going around the Earth, and I, I can't imagine how many times it's light, it's dark. It's light, it's dark. Actually, that's great. We, we go around the Earth 16 times in a day, so we're going 17,500 miles an hour. It's an amazing uh, sensation. And we, so we get to see a sunrise and a sunset about every 45 minutes. Uh, we don't have too many windows on this station, so it's not like it's too disruptive to our work. And we, we get up at a, a 6 a.m. GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, and go to bed around 9 at night. And during the daytime, we uh, have a lot of different scheduled activities. A lot of different scheduled activities. Now, Peggy, I understand the president called you to congratulate you. You have the most spacewalks of any other, or of any woman ever to go to the International Space Station. So we want to say congratulations. What was it like to get a phone call in space from the president? Well, that was very special uh, to get that phone call. Uh, it's great when NASA gets acknowledged for some of the things that we're doing up here, and uh, it, it was just very special. What do you learn about yourself after spending 500 plus days in space? Well, I think you learn, you do learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about how to live and work in teams. And I've lived up and worked up here with many different people. And it's interesting uh, how the character of the mission changes on each day with each crew mix. And so we have a fantastic time uh, figuring that out, figuring out what, what means something to you and what uh, what we need to work to strive to make ourselves better, to interact better, to get more work done. All of that's an important part of what we do up here. April 24th, you surpassed the record for the most cumulative time in space by a U.S. astronaut, which was 534 days. By the time you come down, it will be over 600 days where you've learned how to uh, twirl the microphone like that. Just out of curiosity, because you haven't been on Earth for so long, Peggy, what's the, what's the big thing you're really missing about life on Earth and having your feet <laughs> on terra firma? Well, obviously, you know, having uh, friends and family that you can hug, we can call them on our IP phone or send emails, but being uh, there uh, and being able to uh, touch and be with uh, your loved ones is really important. Uh, I think probably, though, in general, I miss the ability to cook my own food. You know, we eat most of our stuff out of packages, and as, though, as creative as I try to be with food up here, there's limited number of supplies that we have. Uh, to make things new and different. And so I think that's probably the biggest challenge and the thing I miss most. I, li I like cooking and I also like gardening and hobbying and I, I miss that a little bit. I did get the opportunity, however, though, to grow uh, some lettuce and some cabbage, which we did get to eat. That was great. Excellent. Cool. Very nice. Wow. Well, I think we can all say officially this is the first time we've talked to anyone in space. Peggy, right. thank you for doing this for our country. and. Um, we wish you all the best. Peggy Woodson, thanks so much. Congratulations on the record. We appreciate it. We'll check in with you again. I find uh, myself doing the interview like this. It's <laughs> <laughs> so right. cool. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Fox News, Fox and Friends portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Bloomberg Television. Commander Whitson, this is Patrick in New York. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I have you loud and clear. How do you hear me? We are seeing and hearing you just fine. Thank you very much for joining us. Please stand by. I'll hand you off to the control room. 
Okay, we're going to go in a different direction here, Jonathan. Back in the day, NASA was the only game in town when it came to U.S. space exploration, but now there's Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' Blue or Origin. So, are they competitors or are they partners as we seek to go beyond the bounds of Earth? Here for a unique perspective is NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson, the first female commander of the International Space Station, the holder of the record for the longest time spent in space, and now on her third long-duration space flight. She joins us from the International Space Station roughly 250 miles above us. And this is the sign on station. This is Bloomberg Television. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. Okay, thanks so much. It's great to be with you. So you've spent a lot of time in space over the last 15 years now, Peggy. Uh, what are you doing up there, and what are you most excited about that you're working on? Actually, we're doing an incredible amount of science these days up here, which I'm actually very happy about. As a biochemist, uh, my, my favorite experiments, are, I'm a little biased toward those that are, are more biochemistry-oriented, so... I have did one this morning, genes in space. Another one that I've been working on are growing cardiac stem cells. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, diverse things up here, though. There are many different studies looking at physical properties. We have a combustion rack where we do different uh, burning principles w with the lack of gravity uh, just as a variable that uh, they can compare to for ground studies. Um, so there's lots of different biophysical, physics, uh, engineering types of investigations going on. In fact, we have around 280 investigations going on at any one point in time. Obviously, we're not doing all of those, but we do get our hands on many of them. So it's a lot of fun. So, so as a NASA astronaut, Peggy, you, of course, are involved with the government. A lot of the news right now about space actually is coming from the private sector with Elon Musk, for example. Uh, if you were doing it all over again, would, would Elon Musk be your boss, or are there some things that private can do that public can't and the public can do that private can't? Well, I think at the place we are right now, uh, uh, the government can do more, uh, but that is, for instance, we're seeding some of the money, seed money for some of the commercial providers, uh, SpaceX and uh, Orbital ATK are providing cargo up here to the space station. Hopefully in the next year or so, we'll be actually getting crew supplied by SpaceX or Boeing. And so I think the, the, the commercial to private, the government to commercialization is transitioning right now. And it's fantastic to see the, the cargo coming up on all these different vehicles. And uh, I really do think it's the future uh, because just like aviation, uh, it has to expand um, in order to be really prolific, and having these, these programs in place now is a, definitely a stepping stone for further development. And that allows the government then to spend more money on uh, going and, expand, and exploring beyond uh, low Earth orbit, which is what the current limitations are planned for for some of the commercial providers, and, right. and we do hope to encourage them to continue on actually into further deep space as well. So, so finally, Peggy, let's go way beyond lower Earth orbit. There's a lot of talk right now about colonizing Mars, actually going to Mars and living there. You've been living in space a fair amount of your life now over the last 15 years. Is that a realistic goal to set to actually have a colony on Mars? I do think it's a fantastic goal to have. We should have colonies on Mars and the moon, and we should be expanding and exploring even further. So, yes, and I think it's going to take some technology development, and we're, going to, and we're using the International Space Station here to perfect some of those technologies. For instance, if we go on a multi-year mission to Mars, we need to be able to have a closed life support system, which means... Um, we need to be able to process our urine and make it into drinking water. We do that here on board the space station, and, uh, you know, we're at about 85% of what we call closing the loop of life support systems, at least in the water balance system. Yep. And so it's, it's very exciting to be a part of those uh, right. um, investigations, those testing, engineering and testing that's right. going on up here right now. 
thank you so much. It's a real privilege to talk with you. That's NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson, Jonathan. I just got a, uh, a tweet from someone called Moon Man who said, Peggy Whitson. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, Fox News. Fox and Friends and Bloomberg Television Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Nice job, Peg.